Data classes were added to Python in 3.7 and give us a simpler way to create a class object that is aimed at storing the data state. Technically, they are just like regular classes, but give us an easier way to create a class designed specifically for data. To make a standard class in Python, we would need to create a load of Dunder methods like init and repr or any others that we may need, whereas importing and using the data classes module, this is all created for us, making the developer experience much nicer. We can add type hints to aid with writing code and use dot notation to access specific parts of the data easier and use other useful features like as dict and as tuple to export our data. So let's put this into a bit more of a working example so you can kind of see a bit more about how it might work. So we'll do the same, we'll do from data classes, we'll import our data class and we're also going to do from request HTML, we're going to import the HTML session because we're going to be pulling some data from a website to actually put into our data class. You can do this any way that you like, this is just an example, you can use request and beautiful soup if you prefer. But before we get to that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is IP Royal. IP Royal is a provider of high quality proxies to cover a whole load of different use cases. Cases. We'll get to that point in our projects where we need a little bit of help to get around some more common web scraping problems and the answer is almost always a proxy and this is why I think you should check out IP Royal. So I've been using their Royal residential proxies for a while now and I found that they have been excellent for all the use cases that I found. However, if you need something a bit different, maybe you need a static IP, they've got those too, or maybe you just want massive throughput with some data center proxies and you don't need that residential IP to go with it they have that too for you there are unlimited concurrent requests too which means async is great and also it's super easy to input them into your code just by adding that proxies into that request they'll auto rotate for you if you choose you can select locations as well so everything on that response is absolutely covered for you if this sounds like something that you want to get into or want to have a look at, check out the link in the description below. And if you go to the Royal Residential Proxies, which is the ones that I use, you use code JWR50, you're going to get 50% off your first order. So thank you very much to IP Royal for sponsoring this video and let, let's get cracking. So let's create our data class. So we're going to use our decorator again for data class and then we're going to call this our class of item. So we're going to say again we'll have a name which will be a string we're going to have a price which will be a floating point number again uh, we'll have the skew which is going to be a string and the next thing we're going to have is we're going to have a list of attributes so we'll call this uh, attributes and this will be something that will be defined by uh, the list of information from the site that we're getting now we, we might find that one of the items doesn't have any attributes or some have more or some have less so what i'm going to create here is i'm going to make this a list but i'm actually going to make it optional so if it doesn't exist it will actually allow us to not have this here so this is where optional comes in and this comes from typing so you need to import this vs code did it for me manually within this i'm going to say it's a list of strings now, because we are saying this is optional, we need to give it a default value if it doesn't exist. So we can just say none. So this is just going to allow us that if whatever item we pull doesn't have this attributes list or anything like that, we can just set it to none as we go forward. It's a good way of dealing with missing bits of data. So now we just want to move on to scraping the actual information itself. So I'm going to create a new function. We're going to call this get data. I'm going to put everything in here. This is more about the data classes rather than the scraping itself. So we'll say our URL is equal to, I've got that over here. We'll just copy this across. It's just some uh, product information here. Then we say that my session is going to be equal to the HTML session object using requests here, request HTML. The session is just a better way of managing the requests you're making. Uh, you should always generally use a session uh, anytime you're making requests to a server. Now we're going to say that the response that we get back is going to be session.get, giving it the URL. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to return that response out of this function. There we go. So this one function is basically all it's going to do is get the information for us. So now we want to create another function that's going to do something with that data. I'm just going to call this one pass data. And we're going to give it the response here. Now here is where we can actually load the data into the data class that we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that our item is going to be equal to the class of item. 
Now I know I'm calling this item here and item here. Uh, you could call this whatever you like. Um, we could just call this product instead. That might be better. Now what we want to do is we want to give it the name, etc., etc. So we want the name uh, price. It's going to be this and the SKU like this. And let's just move down. And the last one was the attribute. So you can see that because I'm using um, the data class it's giving me all of these uh, these in my uh, completion in my code editor here. So this is going to be a list and so we need to do something with that. So I'm just going to copy across the selectors just as I said because this is about the data class and nothing else. So all you'll see here is some CSS selectors using uh, request HTML to grab that information. You can of course scrape this data first. You could put it all into a dictionary and then load it in like this. You could say product is equal to your item and then give it the, uh, then the name of your dictionary like this. That would also work, but I'm going to load it directly in here and I'm just going to return out this product here. There we go, return product. So this, let's just run through this really quickly. So I'm basically stating I'm creating an instance of my data class here. If I hover over it, you'll see VS Code is telling me that this is a class and it is a name price, skew, and attributes, uh, and it's saying none is equal to none, that would be the default. So let's return this out here, and then we'll have our main function that's just gonna run everything for us, and I'll say that the HTML is gonna be equal to our get data function. So when we run this function, it returns the response object. I'm just gonna say this is called HTML down here, and then we can say that our uh, item is going to be equal to actually let's give this a bit more of a better name I know that this is a guitar pedal website so we'll say pedal is equal to passing of this data that's my function of the HTML so now that I've done this you'll notice that when I hover over this it's saying that this is a type of item so we can now do things like print pedal dot attributes name price and skew so we can actually access each individual part just by referencing it with a dot notation, which makes it a lot easier. You don't have to, for example, if this was a dictionary, you'd have to do something like this and you'd have to know that it was in there. If you're dealing with large bits of data, it's much easier just to be able to do this and have it also complete for you. So let's put in our if name is equal to main and we'll be able to run our code now and let's just run the main function here when we do this and let's run it. So we can see this is the name of the product that we got back. That is basically what's just coming back from this one URL here. As I said, this isn't about the scraping, this is about the data class itself. So let's go ahead and import in that as dict, as dict like this. And we can now, instead of printing out the pedal.name, we can print out as dict and then print it out all as a dictionary. This is going to be one way that we might want to export this data. You can see now we have the name, the price, the SKU, and the attributes, which is a long list of data. Now, if this product that we were scraping, maybe we're moving on to a different product, maybe it didn't have attributes. So we can just say, well, let's comment this out for the moment. Let's just say, oh, okay, this one only had the name, price, and the SKU. So let's run this now and we'll get back exactly the same thing. Here's our dictionary, attributes are none. Because we specified it up here as optional list of strings, the default would be none. So this is just a way that you can make your life a bit easier when you're writing your code. It gives you some more structure. You get the type hints so you know that this is supposed to be uh, a string. This is supposed to be a float. This is supposed to be a list. I've commented that out. This is supposed to be a list and it has a default value of none. Now, some of you, as soon as you saw data classes, you might be thinking, why not just use Pydantic? And I have covered that in another video and it does give you a load of cool features as well. But if you wanted to stick to something a bit more simple, a bit more basic in the standard library, then data classes is definitely a great option. So as we said at the beginning, it creates all those Dunder methods for you, meaning that this is all you need to write with this decorator just to get all of that done. And you can see here, it's telling you all about it in there. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, you enjoy Python data, definitely subscribe to me down below, drop a comment, like all that stuff. 
and go ahead and watch this video next where I'll talk more about how to actually get this information to stick into a data class like this one.